Are we ready? <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm really glad everyone's listening. Welcome to the lost continent of Atlantis, uh, a scientific expose. Uh, it's very, really amazing because there's such an enormous amount of material that's sort of been talked about over time. And also, you know, lots have been sort of written about uh, Atlantis. And, you know, it's been placed everywhere sort of thing. And um, I'd love to be able to, uh, um, in this show, point out where Atlantis was and um, what occurred um, during that period of time and the time frame and everything. Um, so I, I can promise a really great uh, show that we're doing on uh, the lost continent of Atlantis. And I'm going to do everything I can to bring in more of a scientific um, expose. But anyway, the story really begins for lots of people with Plato um, because um, it was really uh, Plato who um, uh, uh, puts Atlantis into the literature. Um, and, um, you know, uh, it's amazing because um, uh, Plato... Um, um, through uh, Thera may have been located on the fringes of the Atlantean Empire, but it was um, uh, not to be the great island spoken of by Plato, which placed the island beyond the Pillars of Hercules out in the Straits of Gibraltar uh, on the way to the great continent of America that lots of people have talked about. Um, but um, it definitely, if uh, our listeners can um, can imagine in their mind where, or visualize in their mind uh, the Azores, which is out of uh, Morocco, um, out into the Atlanta, Atlantic Ocean. Um, um, we can come to the very northern uh, tip of where Atlantis was, and, you know, it was quite a large landmass about um, 1,900 miles um, long and um, about 1,000 miles or more wide. Um, and uh, the northern end of it was very, very tall uh, and uh, it, all the ice from the uh, permafrost came all the way down um, and the warm Gulf Stream that used to be a uh, blocked um, uh, by the island of Atlantis. Now, the Gulf Stream is a beautiful warm current that comes up from uh, Africa and the Amazon, and it circulated in the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, it would never really made it much past the island of Atlantis. And so the permafrost uh, was... Uh, 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 came all the way down to that latitude and most of Europe and America, Northern America was uh, uh, quite under ice at the time um, but um, the, um, you could say that the um, uh, Caribbean uh, and the, bah the Bahamas and um, areas of the Caribbean there were just some islands that was the tip of the bottom of uh, Atlantis um, and um, it's amazing uh, that when, when you look at pollen samples of uh, uh, to discover climate change and things we find a picture of uh, climate having radically changed um, around uh, 10,000 years ago um, and what I'd like to describe is what really occurred back then. Um, but um, uh, it was um, Plato's um, um, uncle uh, who uh, had gone to uh, uh, Egypt and had talked to the priests there um, had, and um, had come back with this story um, that the priests in Egypt um, talk about this island um, and the people uh, out there in the ocean, um, which uh, was uh, collapsed by a by the heavens, um, and uh, so 
most everything um, uh, in the literature uh, stems from this story that Plato tells, um, and and then since then lots of lots of uh, research and things have sort of been done, and lots of books have been written and that, and I'd like to do what I can to uh, just to summarise a bit of some of the insights and things. Um, uh, of uh, Atlantis, but anyway, um, uh, it is interesting that um, on uh, uh, the eighth at eight p.m. on June fifth in eight thousand four hundred and ninety-eight BC, it is the time frame that the Mayan calendar begins, and it begins right then with the conjunction of uh, three very bright stars which come into alignment um, and it is interesting that the there's the adenoids uh, are a group of asteroids which circle the sun and it's not in a similar sort of uh, uh, plane which the uh, rest of the planet sort of spin uh, and circle around the sun but come in on another angle and it's sort of really quite an oblique sort of angle um, and it um, it can be shown that one of these um, asteroids, uh, which is quite a large uh, body really, but this body was around about eight miles um, in its length and at least a couple of miles wide, was more flat and long. Um, but that's a pretty huge uh, body um, that can have penetrated the Earth. It broke up, of course. Um, and penetrated the earth um, and it broke into a couple of pieces um, but probably broke into a few more than a couple of pieces but two pieces at least it broke into um, and they account for the huge um, holes that are in the sea um, that um, you know it's about um, seven miles uh, deep um, and probably went right into the core because um, it would have approached the Earth at about um, 15 um, kilometres or something uh, per second or something, so that's pretty fast, and it would have buried itself, and it was so um, hot uh, that it would have caused enormous amounts of gases to be created of the rock deep down um, and caused a honeycomb-like uh, effect. Um, and that it couldn't have uh, landed in a more volatile area than where it did because the continents, uh, most of all the continents of the Earth are around about 30 to 35 miles thick but the Atlantic um, ridge line, the plate there um, is much thinner and there's a huge fault line which runs all the way from uh, the uh, at, uh, Atlantic all the way down to um, South America. And all the way along that uh, fault line, there's enormous uh, volcanoes um, that have been, and they all were sort of just like rivets in a plate that can have uh, been holding things together. But once this occurred, uh, all hell sort of broke loose and um, it took within three days, it can be calculated that all the way along that ridge line, the, um, uh, it opened up and the ridge line went all the way around the island of Atlantis um, and um, of course uh, it um, caused the island just to sink um, within a matter of um, one day and one night um, so something like uh, 60 million um, inhabitants um, perished um, and of course you know it would be like a little bit like having a court case um, after the fact of something having occurred but uh, having no witnesses at all um, and, and uh, how could we conduct um, an investigation as to what really occurred back then. Well, we can certainly uh, look at stories and things uh, and myths um, of um, 
Atlantis on uh, from the people that survived both in the in the Atlantic and of course in Asia and um, in Africa um, that were far enough away from the impact zone that um, they were able to survive. Um, but of course, um, it radically altered and changed uh, everything. But it's amazing to me because um, when a calendar begins, like the Muslim calendar, it begins with with Muhammad um, travelling from uh, Mecca to Medina, um, and um, that historical event is the uh, time frame of when they begin their calendar. Um, we begin our calendar. Um, um, AD is uh, after Christ's uh, death uh, and BC is bef uh, before Christ. Um, events in history um, often cause uh, us to begin sort of some dating or counting and our listeners might ask themselves what could be the reason why the uh, Mayan calendar uh, begins on uh, June 5th in 8,498 BC um, at 8 p.m. Um, I mean, um, what is it that actually causes the calendar count to begin then? Um, though uh, the people that created the calendar um, said that um, we um, were moving into a new era um, and uh, we um, and then the myth all tell of various types of suns that we've had as we looked up at the heavens, and certainly the last sun that we had was a sun which was called a watery sun, um, and um, and 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 once all that water has uh, cleared, um, we uh, we have a sun which is called the sun of earthquakes, which in this era right now where we're in is a time frame more of earthquakes and things which can be explained that the reverberations of the last asteroid and everything that hit still to this day reverberating in the earth uh, and also the earth has been wobbling in its in its circle around itself um, since um, and uh, all these um, Earth changes and things have all been uh, caused and impacted as a result of astrological um, events that have occurred. Uh, when we look at the moon, we can certainly see uh, all the uh, evidence of uh, enormous amounts of electrical sort of um, uh, shocks that have been given off uh, the moon and asteroids that have hit the moon. Um, its surface is sort of fairly much sort of undisturbed and not anything much has has uh, occurred to be able to uh, change the evidence of our looking back at this. But the Earth is in, uh, in a unique circumstance where uh, water and wind and rain uh, and uh, uh, heat um, and... Uh, changes in temperature and things have uh, all caused uh, quite a bit of uh, and of course also we could uh, say uh, life as well because um, uh, bacteria you know goes all the way very deep into the earth um, but um, all, uh, so biology has also caused the changing of the surface of the earth to cover over a lot of uh, the, the, the type of pock marks that the moon has, but um, the Earth, uh, when you look at the globe, you can see many, many places where there's been quite large impacts that have occurred on the Earth, and uh, what sunk Atlantis was an impact uh, from um, these asteroids that um, circled around the Earth, um, and that it did hit um, on this day. Um, it can be shown from lots of evidence, scientific evidence and things as to that having occurred. Um, but um, it's interesting that, um, that the, the first evidence, of course, is that... It